Good evening, friends. I'm Motorcycle Pastor, and I want to welcome you back to a place and a time when we can give thanks to God, recall His unfailing love that He showed to us throughout today, and as we prepare to rest our heads for the evening, rest our lives in His promises that He has fulfilled and that He will fulfill for us, that He reminds us of tonight and every night of our lives. Let's look at his word in Luke chapter 11, verse 4, where we read, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We're going to use Charles Spurgeon's evening by evening as a launching pad to get into this, and here's what he writes. The thing we are taught to seek or to avoid in prayer, we should equally pursue or avoid in action. We should with sincerity avoid temptation, seeking to walk so guardedly in the path of obedience that we may never tempt the devil to tempt us. We're not e- to, we are not to enter the jungle in search of the lion. We might pay dearly for such presumption. This lion may cross our path or leap upon us from the jungle, but we have nothing to do with hunting him. He that meets with him, even though he wins the day, will find it a tough struggle. Let the Christian pray that he may be spared the encounter. Our Savior, who had experience of what temptation meant, thus earnestly admonished his disciples, pray that you do not enter into temptation. But let us do as we will, we shall be tempted Hence the prayer, deliver us from evil. God had one son without sin, but he has no son without temptation. The natural man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward, and just as certain the Christian man is born to temptation. We must be always on our watch against Satan because, like a thief, He gives no intimation of his approach. Believers who have had experience of the ways of Satan now, or excuse me, know that there are certain seasons when he will most probably make an attack, just as at certain seasons bleak winds may be expected. Thus, the Christian is put on a double guard by fear of danger, and the danger is averted by preparing to meet it. Prevention is better than cure. It is better to be so well armed that the devil will not attack you than to endure the perils of the fight even though you come off a conqueror. Pray this evening first that you may not be tempted. And then if temptation be permitted, pray that you may be delivered from the evil one. Do you believe there's evil, brothers and sisters? Do you believe, as I have said before, and as you've heard Spurgeon say, and countless other pastors down through history, never mind the pastors, do you believe the scripture that says there is an evil one, an enemy of souls, a ha Satan of all Satans? This is important, and I'll tell you why. Because in the world today, it's trying harder than ever to convince you there is no enemy of souls. There is no one, no prowling lion. There is nothing out there to get you. It's lulling you in to a false sense of security. That's the fact. And if you don't believe it, then you truly don't believe scripture. And if you're just choosing to cut apart scripture into whatever image you're trying to make, you're just trying to make a God in your own image, a God that you're comfortable with, a God that truly will not change you because it will not challenge you. Our God reveals the truth to us so that we might be very well prepared. Prepared for the temptation prepared for the onslaught, 
prepared for the evil one who is constantly at work in searching. Notice I didn't ask, do you believe he's everywhere? Do you believe this and that? Those are other discussions for another day and time. Do you believe what the Bible says? See, this is part and parcel to this discussion. Do you believe when God shares his word with people and they record it, their experiences, their lives, and that when his Holy Spirit worked to bring it together into the Bible that we have today, whether it's 88 or 66 books, do you believe that this is God's word for you? Because if you don't, and you're saying, I don't believe the word of God. Well, the word of God became flesh incarnate in Jesus. That's why we record all about him in the New Testament. And you can't say, well, I believe in the New Testament, but not the Old, because the Old Testament is literally pointing its way right towards him. They go hand in hand. We don't get to divide it. And when we do, we put ourselves at risk. There's a reason why Jesus taught his followers to pray in this way, that they would understand what they're up against, that they would be prepared so that they would have no fear. It is those individuals who are lured into this false sense of security, into this delusion that there is no enemy of souls that are so woefully unprepared that they cry out, at the bangs and the bumps and the clashes, not because those things are unreal, but because precisely they are real. And these individuals have no idea how to prepare for them because everything the world has taught them and the poor twisted teachings of individuals who claim to be Christians, but as Paul says, are imitators only. We're to be imitators of Christ, not imitators of the faith not twisting its teachings. We're here to teach all of it in truth, even the parts that we disagree with, even the parts that we struggle with. Those are the hard edges where we grow. I pray for you, brothers and sisters, that you will believe and hold all of Scripture in its fullness, in its authority, in its being from God, that you might truly be prepared for the evil one, for his doings, for what he's trying to get over on all of us. See, it's highly tempting to listen to the world because the world is preaching comfort, not truth. The world is preaching, you know, if you don't believe that, that's okay. Just be comfortable with this. The world is preaching, teaching anything but the truth and it will leave you unprepared. Don't give in to the temptation of the culture. Instead, submit thyself and humble thyself before the Christ that you might be fully prepared for anything that comes. And you don't have to worry about fighting the lion, Satan, because we have the lion of Judah on our behalf. And it's a much bigger lion than Satan. Satan is just a creation of God, a fallen angel, whereas the lion of Judah is God himself, the son of God. There's no comparison. There's no arm wrestling. There is literally just Jesus standing there and giving the fullness of God's word back. And Satan can do nothing. For the authority that was once given to Satan over this world, all authority is now given to Jesus the Son. And we rest in that this evening. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope you get into scripture tonight and every night of your lives and rest in it. This is Motorcycle Pastor saying I'll see you in the morning.